Wow, this is different. But anyway, uh, welcome back to the Hoosier Garage. And we're gonna put this trunk floor with the extensions on our 72 duster. We're gonna show you how to do it. All the holes you gotta drill. We're not gonna get in detail on that, but we'll just show you that we did them. And you'll see what it takes to get one of these on, especially with everything else off. Watching the most unique automotive channel on YouTube, the Hoosier Garage. Okay, so like we said on this installment, we're gonna do the trunk floor. We're gonna get the frame rails ready. If you check out the earlier episodes, we had the rebuilt part of the frame rail, part of the shackle boxes back here, underneath here, and we'll show you that in a second, just what it looks like now. But we have to prep everything else and get it ready to weld in, because there's gonna be a lot of little spot welds, plug welds, stuff like that going on here. And I've been doing a little bit of work on this. Uh, early in the week, I went ahead and took the pan off, uh, reset it in here, and then scribed all our lines where everything needed to be. So there's, where this fits up to the, the wheel wells, the, uh, it, it's kind of self-explanatory with this trunk floor. It'll fit in there. It kind of, you know, you massage it in a little bit, but everything should kind of fall out even. Once you get it squared up good, then I scribe lines underneath it uh, where the frame rail makes its footprint on it and then proceeded to make little dots about every two inches for the frame rail welds, okay? And then the same thing goes through over here on the, the shackle boxes, all right? So other areas that need to be drilled, at least at this point, would be along the back edge or the, the inward part of the car where it starts to go towards the wheel wells all the way across. So back up in here. And then if we're gonna add the extensions on, which we've bought separately, then we wanna drill the holes on the little flange that flaps downward that butts up to those. So we did a lot of that and they're also every two inches. And this right here is uh, actually one piece right now. I went ahead and just tacked a few of the spots to attach the extensions to the trunk floor. Now I'm gonna pull this whole thing out here in a second, but it's all lined up how it needs to be. So I, it was all test fit, so I did it where it needed to be. So you can do it that way if you want, especially if it's all apart like this. Not gonna be as easy to do if you have the quarter panels on it and you're working around all that or the tail panels in it. It's gonna be really rough. So if you're just doing a complete rebuild like this, which honestly a lot of these cars really need it. I really only have a couple spot welds holding the extension on. But all the holes are drilled on the trunk part, okay? So the trunk part has a flange that drops down, and then the extension has a piece that drops down. Well, I wanna drill it on this side because your access from this point is gonna be very prohibited from getting a welder, getting a lot of your other tools in there. So it's much more accessible from this side, and to do it while it's out, in this case that I have with all the remaining less what left the car off of it we flipped this completely over so this is completely upside down and with the holes drilled on this part on the trunk force side of it we can access it extremely easily is that even a, a, a phrase extremely easy so we can so we can access this really well right here we just basically zap the welds from this side or if you're trying from this side, it's gonna be a lot harder. Also, if you're doing it while it's in the car, and a lot of you will have to do it that way. There's just no way around it. You're gonna be fighting the frame rail coming up here to get it here, but it's still probably better to do it on this side because you just have a little bit more space, more angle than you do here where it's all wrapped around. So the holes were all drilled. It's all ready to go. Really what we need to do now is complete these welds and then dress them out, make them look nice, smooth, and then we've got to do it on the other side as well. So what I'm gonna do, since this is going to be much easier, I can actually stand this thing up on one end and we can weld it where it's horizontal as opposed to welding it at this angle here. So we'll show you how we're gonna just set it up real easy. Nothing big deal about that. So all I did was just stand it up here. That way we can go directly downward in a horizontal fashion and get the rest of these welds into place. I did use our weld through primer. You can see some of the gray right here on both sides of the flange. 
Uh, anything that butts up, you want to use your weld through primer. We've used it in some of the previous episodes, especially when you have a lap weld, anything where large sections of metal are going to be covered in the other ones and there's going to be a weld in there especially. Um, because right here it's going to allow that, that weld through uh, property, it's just going to suck up around the weld and some are better than those. Many like to use the copper. Uh, the zinc style was what was available to me, so I went ahead and went with that. But people have their preferences, it's just whatever uh, you feel more secure with. So that's all I gotta say about that. And I'm gonna get this done, so. Now I will add before welding these type areas up where you have the flanges coming together like this. It's good to have this kind of a vice grip clamp right here. It's a welding clamp and it has this U shape in it. And where the panels are not quite flush together, you can take this and you can adjust the pressure like any other vice grip. And once you squeeze it in, it brings them together. Weld it and just using them on any of these, whether it's, it's apart, it's not flush together with the other piece because you want a nice tight bond there. It's just better. Uh, everything's going to fit better and ultimately it's going to look better and nice and flat. So get these at the farm store, any of the welding supply stores you can find them. I have a, a handful of them, so they're really nice to have. All right, so we got that welded up, and we have a couple more things to do with that. Don't really need to do it now, but we do want to get this prepped up to accept weld, okay? So this area here, this is where we added some new metal. We added an entire frame rail section from here all the way to the cross rail back here. A new piece here and a new piece here. And then we put all the, the OEM stuff back in, like this brace here, bracket over here, stuff like that. Kind of just rebuilt it back to the way it was stock okay now these areas here this flange anything where it's kind of bent down like that all the rest of the frame rail all the way up to here at least and the rest of this must be taken down to the bare metal because that's going to be a surface for the, the weld where we drilled our holes in the pan they're going to be attached to this part if you saw the floor pan the, the passenger floor pan we did few episodes ago same thing you had to just clear all that out and then ultimately we're going to put weld through primer on top of this for the reason we, we listed earlier okay uh, the only other uh, area that we'll need to do is right back here we're going to clean that up a little bit and it'll get the, the weld through primer because the trunk panel will flat down over it and this area right here where it wraps around there's the flange on the extensions and the trunk pan that weld up to that same thing over there so in all this could probably take 10 minutes to just get all this cleaned up uh, with where this one is right now and the new metal here and here so it's gonna be pretty easy and I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out and you'll see it here in the next scene okay so all this is cleaned up ready for the pan for the most part now we're gonna have to do the uh, weld through primer like we told you earlier, all that good stuff. I went ahead and drilled these other holes here to make it easier to weld from the back side, the wheel well side, onto the extension and the trunk. So I went ahead and did those two inch apart holes across there with the plug weld. And now what I want to do is clean out everything else here. Now all the, the dust and the slag from welding that's sitting in these frame rails, we want to clear that out. And just make sure you look because you never know what you might find laying in your frame round you go welding stuff over it and you can't get it out then so just thinking just just trying to help you out weld through primer is all applied this has all been cleaned up vacuumed out the frame rails wiped everything down with degreaser scuffed anything up that was still slick like new pieces of metal that we welded in and then cleaned it again and then did the weld through primer. That's what all the gray is you see on all the edges over here, okay? So to save ourselves some trouble or some back strain or stuff in our eyes, why not get you some sandpaper and if you got a toe or just want to use your hands, this underside here, depending on how you're gonna do it, if you wanna paint it, even if you wanna undercoat it, you need a good surface to grab onto. So why not sand this now instead of trying to do an upside down with the frame rails on the way 
let's just do this now. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time sanding all this down. And where the holes are, this is where frame rail will be. This is where frame rail will be. And then the shackle box will sit right in this area right here. And then along here is that cross rail flange. We'll have to take our sanding wheel and just kind of open the bare metal up there just a little bit. Just take this EDB coating off or black coating, whatever you want to call this, this protective paint, and just take it back a little bit so that we can put our weld through primer on this as well. So we want to leave the tracks of that on both sides so that when they come together, you get a 360 degree coverage on that weld through primer. So I'm going to start sanding on this, eat some dinner in a bit. Might even have an end in it. I don't know. Alright, so it was last night when I, uh, you last saw me talking to you here. I spent about an hour and a half sanding the other side of this thing. This is right side up right now. Now is a great time to like and subscribe to the Hoosier Garage. So we have the pan setting in here. We've got to pretty much fit up here where it needs to, but there's a gap right here. And you want to make sure to run you some sheet metal screws, tech screws down in various places just to bring it down flush with the frame rail here and the frame rail there. Also, you'll want it to fit down nice with this panel right here, this over the axle panel. So we'll stick a few in there and you can ultimately just weld the holes up. It'll cover both sides. Now right here, here's an issue that uh, I was aware of last week and I did some pre-fitment. See how the flange hangs down really low here? This is actually this piece here. And then our holes are right here and they're very low on this flange. But it's gonna be a matter of massaging this a little bit. We might have to bend this piece down some and bring this back a little bit so that it'll come up and meet with this much better. And then we can put a clamp in there, okay? Now on this side, a little bit easier. We got this one clamped. This hangs down really low otherwise, so I brought it up to where it matches that and then clamped it tight. So that's gonna stay there. Really good fit, and we can ultimately clamp this together when we do it. But with no quarter panels on this right now, I wanna leave this to here on both sides loose so that it can flex it a little bit because when we test fit the quarter panel, we want that to fit all the way under this slip and fit up here where it needs to. If this is down too far, you're gonna be in trouble. And if you weld it that way, you're gonna to have to cut it back out. So at least we can have some adjustment with this bending it down or whatever it needs to come up. But we're not sure on that yet, so we're gonna leave it be. But we will just worry about the main primary trunk floor here as if these aren't even on here. These are just convenient to weld as they are with this car in this state, completely backless here. And we'll work from there. Now the gap here is a little heavy and you can see we have a texture started here and it's not tightened down all the way yet well we're going to tighten that down it's going to bring that flush and we might have to do a couple others through there that's completely okay to do that it assures that you're going to do a quality job so i'm going to go through i think this one's ready to go there so that should tighten that gap up and it did and we want to put one in see where the light's kind of coming through right about there We'll put one in back here and then just a couple here. You just want to see it to be flush. You want it to have no shadow inside these holes. Okay? And if you have to put 20 of them in here, then you got to do what you got to do. But just keep it flush. It's going to be a better structure. It's going to look better. It's going to work better and so on. So I'm going to work on getting some of these into place and I'll show you how it looks then and how we get this over here to match up even though that's down this actually needs to come up 
just the way this was cut here and I duplicated that flange when I rebuilt that wheel well. So that's just the way it is. We're gonna to try to keep it that way. As it turned out, we did need quite a few of these screws. Just the panel has a lot of wobble to it. And I'm guessing a lot of that's probably when they stamped this big crater of a spare tire well. Just what happened. So I have a little shadow in the holes through here and I have a screw here, 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 there, 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 there couple through here so they're roughly about four to five inches apart and then same thing over here I got a few down through here and a few up to there there's still some gaps going on here just the way that panel is not really fitting that well to this one so what I'll do is I'll weld the ones that are close and then I'll go to move my screws around and get them in those places to draw them together and anywhere you're doing that you know just continue on okay so a bunch of these I could weld up but if I get one uh, like for instance right here you can either take your ball peen and tap it and see if it'll fit if it doesn't then you can take a clamp like one of these I got one right there to close that one up you can take another clamp and put it there or you can run your screw through it just take your time knock them all out make sure they're nice and flush that's the big thing here it fits in here really good um, our gap or a seam here where it meets this piece falls about a quarter of an inch on the inside of this wheel well and does the exact same thing over here so if you're curious about how it's indexed in there how it's fit that's the best we can do with that it's pretty good um, like I said a lot of these areas here they'll get fit in later a lot of it's based on the quarter panel and we'll just go through get the whole framework here tack down good, welded, plug welded, whatever you want to call it, and then we'll move on to the next stuff. Okay, so we're all welded in, except for these wheel wells. And right here you're looking at a jack with an old eight and three quarter axle sitting on it, and it's just the right height for what I need here to push the extension slash edge of trunk floor up to meet this okay and I have the pressure on it right now I will bring it down for uh for your all's sake if I drop this down see how much it drops and I just tighten the jack up and put it right at the pinch where both here's the extension there's the trunk right on those flanges square it up on there good like so and then just bring it up and it'll Kind of resist a little bit but just get it right where you want it and if you can take a clamp clamp it and uh there's a little bit of a, a spread like from this piece to the piece back here it kind of spreads that way so it might be a little bit of a challenge if you get some nice tight ones squeeze them on there good get one here get one there and then tack that at least if not go ahead and plug weld it and like i said we're going to leave this part undone but if you get it here, it's going to allow it to stay where it needs to. Even though if this might flex down, ultimately it's going to be where it's going to agree with it there. Okay, so I'm going to try and clamp this. And so we can actually try it right here on this side. Let's see what we can do. Now that holds kind of soft, but let's see what happens if we take the pressure off the jack. See, it drops. So we want to go on the other side get it back up where it needs to be right there put that loose i'm going to trade the uh with a regular vice grip it's much thinner or narrower whichever you prefer i'm going to put it right between where these welds need to be and there we go now let's see what we got there perfect so we can plug weld those up let it ride from there. And now, a classic Indiana car commercial. We have a sale only one time each year. It's a closeout sale of over 450 1982 Buicks. Now, this is a sale that really is a sale. This means that nobody will sell you a new Buick for less money. Why a closeout sale? You save money, that sells cars. And old Dave needs the money, that's why. Dave Mason Buick, where else?
next time on the Hoosier Garage. So as you can see, the trunk floor is in. Everything's been dressed out, all the welds smoothed out and everything like that. All the important stuff. The ends here, they are still loose and that's for good reason. They'll probably remain loose until the quarter panels actually go on and need to be kind of massaged around for fitment. But uh, on the next episode of the Hoosier Garage, you're gonna see some of this other stuff coming together you might be seeing around the framework of the, the photo here. But uh, we've got some support pieces. This is gonna be about all the support system that ties all this stuff together with the, what's gonna be the quarter panels, uh, not only here, but up around the door jams, and all that kind of stuff. We've got some custom made pieces that go on each side that help support underneath the, uh, the cross rail area some A and D pieces that we've also had to add to it. The lockbox uh, latch area, the tail light supports for the 72, and a lot more. So make sure you stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed, you tell your friends about us here at the Hoosier Garage, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching the Hoosier Garage. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more restoration, tips, and fun. Thank you.